What's up, motherfuckers? So, I just wanted to correct what I, uh, the code I used in the last video. It was not really correct, and it was not the best way to implement anything. So, I just wanted to go over it again and just correct the mistakes I had in the last video. I'll go over three different types of moving platforms in this video. Uh, one that moves in a circular fashion, one that moves in a straight line horizontally, and one that moves vertically up and down. To make a platform that moves in a circular fashion, what you want to do is have a pivot point and have a kinematic body that's a certain distance away, which I put as a z-axis, so it's a z distance of three away, and it just like basically all the all the pivot point does is just rotate, and the kinematic body will rotate uh, in a radius of three around that pivot point. Setting up the rotating moving platform in this fashion makes the code way easier to set up. All you literally need to do is just rotate the pivot point along the y-axis and then just maybe capture two points from each other. So I capture a position before the rotation and a position after the rotation and then I subtract them and divide by the time. So basically what I'm doing is I'm finding the delta between the two positions and then I divide by the time which is basically the physics definition of velocity. The delta parameter in the physics process function will give you the time since the last frame. So yeah, so this will basically be the velocity of each pass through of physics process. The second moving platform is actually very easy to implement. All it does is it's move between two points and then stop at both of those points to let the player to, or any other enemy to get on. So the player can get on and then move to the next point. And then after it delays for a second, it moves back to its original point. So it just moves in between two spots. Very simple. The logic is very similar to the other moving platform. So basically uh, I get the first position before it moves and then uh, I capture that and then I capture the second position after it's done moving and then I get the velocity from the, both of those positions by dividing by delta. I have some timers set up so that I could like only move a certain distance away from its original point and I also have a delay timer that uh, gives it a little bit of time before it resets and moves to the next position. And then uh, while it is moving I just subtract the velocity uh, times delta from the global transform dot origin. So basically from its position. The elevator has the exact same code. It's actually a similar uh, version of the moving platform but it just goes up and down instead of horizontally. <laughs> The reason I went over the moving platforms in this video is because I wanted to show you that guys that you should not use movement slide with these uh, implementations or else it just won't work correctly because it'll try to collide with the player and then it won't like with the elevator for instance it would not go up very well and yeah so it's better just to alter the position directly instead of trying to apply moving slide which is why I need to find the velocity from the two positions. For the pivot one if you notice I'm also just altering the position by just using the rotation. So yeah, so basically the kinematic body itself is not moving along with move and slide like normally, it's just moving along a direct position, so it will not be stopped if it runs into any level geometry. While you'll still be able to collide with it and like jump on it, as you've seen in the video, it will not, it'll just move straight through any objects that are not moving. Basically it's an unstoppable force. So here's the code that I use for the player. So uh, here's where I get all the inputs and I put that into this thing called the desired velocity and this is just for camera bobbing that doesn't have to do with speed and this one right here uh, just like uh, if the player does move like the WASD keys then it'll get that desired velocity.x and desired velocity.z and move along a 2D plane basically. And uh, yeah and right here what's it called I get the slides from uh, the get to, from the last uh, move and slide call, and then I put that into the slope. So right here, I'll go over the slope function. And okay, so first off, if you get some slides, that means you're colliding into something. Then uh, it'll reset the collider velocity, and then we'll, we're gonna check each slide, and we'll give um, the get slide collision to this uh, to a touched variable. The code I'm using today is also implementing the same function that uh, I use for the uh, slope solutions to move correctly on slopes. And now onto the moving platform code. So first we check if the floor that we're touching is actually moving, which means they'll have a greater value than a vector three, uh, than empty vector three. And we also check if the player is on the floor to check if they're actually on top of the moving platform. And then we give the uh, touch.collider velocity 
to our uh, variable called collider velocity. Now, if we're not colliding with anything and we decide to maybe jump on the platform, we want to still stay on it. So this is what this function will do. It's basically a backup function if we're not touching anything. So what I do is I shoot a ray cast straight down from the player's position. And then um, right here, I check if it's, there's a result. So basically if it collides with something, and then I check if the collider has a is a kinematic body 3D. And after that, I just, uh, if the collider has a get velocity function, which I'm gonna put in every single moving platform that I have, then uh, yeah, so I'll check the get velocity function. I'll return the actual velocity, which I got from the two pos from subtracting the two positions and dividing by delta. And then uh, at the pivot point, it was a little bit more complicated since it's a spatial 3D and not a kinematic body 3D. Then uh, I had to, um, I had to get the two positions, basically find the velocity, and then make a get velocity function in the spatial. And then in the kinematic body 2D, I made a get velocity function as well. And all it does is it's called the spatials get velocity. Yeah. So this is, you could see this as a backup function for this one right here, here, basically. So this is a backup. So if we're not touching anything, we still want to get velocity. So we find the slides, put those slides into the slope function. And then we uh, that will give the collider velocity a value, which we'll put in a different variable so that it doesn't change when we times by delta. And then we check if the player is on the floor. So if the player is on the floor, we'll times that collider velocity by delta and then reset the velocity's y value so that we don't fall off the moving platform if it moves in a circular motion, which I'll show you right now. Because if you don't reset the y value of the velocity, you'll just lose connection with the platform and fall straight off when you, if you decide to jump on it. Boom. There's always a chance. So look, if you jump, you go with it for a bit, but then you'll lose connection with it when you jump back down. That's because the gravity is still trying to be applied. As you can see, it was negative 18 and the y velocity. But if we uncomment that and we give the a y velocity of zero, you could jump all you want on a circular moving platform. Let's watch. And boom. We could jump all we want on the moving platform and we'll stay on. Because we're resetting the uh, y velocity each time and we're not like we're not screwing it up at all. Yeah, so it's nice. Whatever you do, the most important thing to take away from this is do not forget to times the collider velocity by delta. So what I do is I've, the reason I'm putting it in this temporary variable because I, I don't want I want to times the collider velocity by delta but not affect the actual collider velocity in case we jump in the air. And then um, so yeah basically what happens is that it, the, this collider velocity gets that collider velocity and then we times that by delta and then add that not this to our velocity. So basically the final collider velocity is actually not that variable but this is just so that we get the actual value and then so we get times by delta without having to worry that we're screwing up this value at the velocity of this one. But yeah. So basically we just do the velocity pl plus collider velocity we, and we just uh, apply the same stuff to move and slide that we would in any other function. So yeah. So just a review, we get the slides. If there are no slides, then um, we call this, but if there are, then we just get the velocity from the thing that we're touching. And yeah, it's pretty fucking simple. So I hope uh, this helped, and I hope you all have a great day.